marks today. Um, and for what's been a really fascinating day, thank you for all the speakers and for the generosity of the audience as well. Um, so as we've seen today, though historically dominated and defined by white men, conceptual art emerging as a radical movement out of a period of ma major social and political upheaval in the 60s and 70s, rejecting traditional processes and institutional critique, offered liberating possibilities to include ideas about, around representation in art for more diverse interventionist practices by artists of color and gendered minorities. So for feminist artists then, embracing conceptualist principles um, avoided the reduction of their work to the unadulterated expression of an essential or naturalized female self, I would like to suggest. So uh, my own take on the subject of the relation between women and conceptual art is to consider how the initial impact of conceptualism, particularly for second wave feminist practices, with their particular mantra, the personal is political, might still resonate today, and this certainly has been addressed today during the, these papers, um, as well as the, uh, the initial critical intervention continuing into the present, and how these resonate still today is kept coming up. So I've anticipated then that this symposium's possible exploration of women and conceptual art as raising the question not only of how conceptual art's radicalism was enabling for women, but also of how the history resonates, this history resonates in the present, particularly in the Me Too uh, present. Uh, might it be possible to engage in a practice that dissolves any coherent linearities of knowledge and understanding in order to complicate the relationship of past and present? And I want to mention Mika Bal's book, Preposterous Histories, which positions the act of doing history in the present as a practice that dissolves coherent linearities of knowledge and understanding. Ball examines what happens in this recasting of the past work into the present, suggesting that, quote, the work performed by later images obliterates the older images as they were before that intervention and creates new versions of old images instead interesting after the conversation we've just had now about that very possibility. So Baal, hers, then, is a challenge to the patrilineal impulse to fix a coherent, coherent narrative of progress, a challenge which employs an interrogative operation to those dominant narratives, engaging critically with representations of the past to produce a more fluid temporality. Baal explores how art, by engaging with what came before, necessarily produces a complexity in the relationship uh, between works that recast past images and upsets this chronology. Uh, what we have then enables a multi-directional dialogue that engages earlier work in a dynamic that is only possible once the notion of cause and effect have been made more complex. So hopefully by reflecting on the context of work by women, as is made possible in this symposium today, we've been able to upset this progressive account of history and reveal a more expansive narrative which critiques and frustrates those patriarchal accounts which seek to structure woman as object rather than subject. So these through, we can see these discursive strategies in many examples today which work in opposition to this linear narratives, fostering new interpretations and different ways of telling in the present, of acknowledging the volatility of the past in the present as in flux, as of a straighting of a coherent and progressive linear narrative. So it's almost like um, this, almost a reversal here, which kept, kept putting what came before this pre as a, almost as an after effect, as post. This is exactly what Ball in its recycling is referring to as a preposterous history. So the symposium has also uh, presented examples of what 
um, and, and as, as embracing this lack of chronology has enabled a multi-directional dialogue, I would suggest. We've seen this open up to several um, opportunities in the presentation, several issues which keep coming up. So, um, remarkable, I've, I've got lots of notes which I'm just going to sort of pick up possibly these recurring issues that happen through today's fabulous papers, thanks again everybody. Um, and yes, it's remarkable as there has been this crossing over of threads keep coming up again between very different propositions, um, particularly in relation to resistance as mentioned um, in the introduction by Joe, how women as overlooked sought to inhabit those negative spaces, this thing of negativity, issues of repetition, humour, um, inhabiting of our own bodies in ways which have uh, severed uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, pol uh, the politics of representation, putting another slant on this. Self-narration becomes a tool to shift concepts of woman as the unadulterated expression of what I call this essential self in this new self-narrativization. Uh, Schneemann's writing again uh, referred to here in, as inhabiting different parts of the body as both political and erotic. I've got lots of notes here. Irene's pre presentation, I thought, in relation to um, giving this, the, this reaccount of repetition and here, this I found quoting Karen Barad here and Donna Haraway's proposition in relation to reflexivity as the, putting this in a theoretical framework of diffraction, I thought was incredible. So this reiteration becomes, has another vibration in its reiteration, which actually proposes new possibilities, the possibility to make a difference, to make something new, which is also Elizabeth Gross's proposition in the doing, as doing our own selves, this self-narration, as I say, which keeps coming up. So, um, oh, I've got so many things to say. Um, representations of our own body, um, difficulties of this self-narration, this wonderful presentation by A.K. Dolvin, which was really incredibly emotional in this, this inhabiting of her body, uh, with particularly this relation to sound, which came, came coming up again, was extremely moving, I thought. Um, and uh, I just want to mention um, uh, by Amy Tobin um, mentioning Rebecca Myers, oh, it's not Rebecca, excuse me, um, Bernadette Myers, um, Harvey Weinstein moment was actually rather funny. Um, not well, she dealt with it in her way. Um, <laughs> rather humorously, question about humor here coming up. Um, uh, in, so inhabiting different parts of the body, embodiment, both political and erotic, as I've said. Um, I think I'd better stop. I could go on and on and on, picking up lots of things from my notes here. But this certainly this collapsing of the of the of the past and the present, and certainly in relation to the archive as a static, fixed uh, repository which can't be shifted. When it, I thought that conversation at the end was really a great note to finish on today uh, about that relationship, um, not as nostalgic, not as sentimental, but as something which is alive and keep, and how we can keep that relation alive. So thank you very much. I think we've got um, another short uh, comment. <laughs>